Alright, it's day four. Buenos dias, day four. <laughs> Starting her off, pulling the trans, it's still leaking oil. They're only letting the cars that run faster than nine <laughs> seconds run to the eighth mile because the shutdown is so short. juice in the battery hard to say Ooh, not looking good <laughs> nice they're off pulling the trans it's still leaking oil thank you guys zach and i were looking through the comments and we saw somebody said that those crank bolts are through bolted and all we did is put a little bit of loctite on them so we're gonna pull the trans back a little bit take out those flywheel bolts and load them up with RTV and stick it back in and fingers crossed. Looking at the videos from when I was moving around the rear main seal, you can see that the crank's through bolted. So since it's an aftermarket crank, we're thinking that's gotta be the leak. We're dropping the, the I just took the, uh, the drive shaft out. Now we're gonna, we're gonna drop the trans back a little bit and get her going. guys so Garrett's got his car on the lift Parker got his transmission on the ground it looks like George and James are still sleeping not a sign of them yet the red lot. wow oh yeah getting her real shiny got a lot of oil on her you know it's been spraying everywhere thought we better clean her up before I put it back in this time instead of doing RTV what we're gonna do is actually put a ton of Loctite on them to seal it up instead of trying to mix RTV and Loctite to hold them in. Yeah. Stick to one. one uh... Alright, got our thread locker and she's about to go swimming. I'm going to go all the way around. Make sure uh, we use a heat gun maybe and we'll pour keep these up before we pull them out next time. There you go. Oh yeah. Good seal wet just <laughs> dripping wet i don't know dude we were down a spacer on the converter last night coming to see it this morning that i didn't put one of them in when i put it back together yesterday and we went our fastest pass so maybe we leave one out again maybe we take another one out maybe we take another one out we go <laughs> dude you cuddled me last night i woke up and pushed you off me Really? Yeah, your leg was literally over my legs. Like, dude, I'm, like not even, I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. Desperate. That's so funny. I was like, "What in the hell?" Man? Getting desperate. <laughs> Getting all frisky. Missing, missing Caroline a little bit. Yeah, that's so funny, dude. <laughs> I am. I don't see. Okay, let me see that. We are crying, red Loctite. Give me a rag. Let me get some out. Let me get some time under here. <laughs> it is transmission time. Time for the transmission. All right, let's get that rig in here. Ready? Yep. So they've already got the transmission back in the car, and George oh, yeah. and James are still not out of their rooms no, yet. They're sleeping. Still sleeping. Big sleepy guys. Zach, what do they say? Early bird gets the worm. Early bird Early gets the worm. George is just in there. Keep cooling the AC. Keep cooling the AC. <laughs> Where'd you see that wire is in my lip? Make sure you don't forget the saying when you put that in. Oh, I know. I know the saying. Don't, you can't say it yet. Yeah, I can't say it yet. All right, you ready? That ain't going anywhere. You know, they say the mountains are blue on what? The Coors Light cans? <laughs> I think it's unfair. Dr. Pepper doesn't have blue mountains. Yeah. I want to know when it's perfect temp. Right? Like a teletemp? Yeah. Hey, uh, you want to grab me some zip ties and some nips? Snips and ties? Look at this. Probably why it shaped really bad. It's 60 or 65. 
Uh, we can pull this jack out now too if you want. Yeah. If anyone's ever spent long nights on the deep side of YouTube where you just keep going watching video after video, this one paid off. Uh, we call this the double wrencher. You put your first wrench in and you can use another wrench to lock it on like this and then you get extra leverage. See that? So I'm tightening these axle bolts. Yeah. Oh, she's snug. Tips and tricks. Tips and oh. tricks. You know what tip and trick I love from your channel was the, <coughs> the one where you put that metal bar on the back of the lawnmower for better stripes? Dude. That's a good tip and trick there. Have you, do you do that? Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. I Dude, think. it makes such a difference. All right, so I'll add a clip here. Basically what I did is I, I put a steel weight behind my lawnmower so that it laid fatter stripes into the yard. <laughs> and then you gotta make sure you aim your stripes right at the neighbor you hate the most house so that when they walk out the front door they see how beautiful your lawn is. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So now we're gonna drill holes here in this flap so that we can zip tie the steel bar on. All, right. All that's left is you gotta grip it and rip it, aim your stripes right at their house and you're good to go. Point Only there. stripes more beautiful than these are the ones on the American flag. Coming right out. All right, that's one six, dude. definitely doesn't smell like fuel so I was just worried you know maybe the head cracked and could have been dumping water in that cylinder definitely wouldn't be a good day there no it's been doing that since day one I saw that same thing which kind of sucks because it's literally dripping right on that spark plug wire I know I hate to lose spark over that still goes eight sixes yeah. <laughs> eight six shit box <laughs> well, that, that could be contributing to why it looks like there's a lot more oil under the car, too, because it's True. mixing with the oil, True. and you're getting a lot more. Alright, what have we got? We got this, uh, this sending an adapter that's leaking oil as well, and I have a brand new Motion one. If you guys can remember from day one, I, uh, used it to you take that little piece out right there. Should probably change the oil since we're here. Okay, you ever get a stuck filter? Take a Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure you don't go all the way through to your oil pan. <laughs> and then crank it out. You like that, Ben? Yeah, that's a good one there. This is the Hand Jammer 9000. You got that dead blow in that orange, or in that Milwaukee bag, the orange one? Oh, Wichita. Oh, yeah, Wichita. Yep, you're right. I was thinking for a second, I'm like, are we in Kansas? Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that, dude. It's like frosting on a cake. Where did you put that cream? My hand points are like, well, bleep, bad. Go up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's our cream. Going to distract hard men at work. How long have you guys been out here for? Yeah, we never went to sleep. Seriously? Yeah. No, we didn't. Huh? We pulled our transmission too. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're done We're already. Day. Day. We're now. I mean, I had some yeah, chips ahoy this morning. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just gotta hold them together, you know? That's what happens when your fiance gets you real good. Yeah? My wife beats me. Oh, man. It's a tough situation. Get some uh, 12 inch 
XL sevens while we're here. Zach, get some get some uh, twelve inch L sevens while we're here. Oh yeah, thank God I've already got the subwoofer and everything. <laughs> oh man. The oil situation looking way better after this in the morning. Let me show you guys. Tell us a little bit about this track. So this is Mid-America Dragway. The the concrete that you see behind us where the staging lanes is, yeah. that was poured in 1943. This was a <laughs> Air Force training field. Back then it was the Army Air Corps. It trained 70,000 fighter pilots for World War II. P oh, yeah. Pilots. The concrete's anywhere between 9 to 14 inches thick. Now the drag That's really, that's a lot. Yeah. That's and it really was, thick. It was expensive when we cored the concrete out for the new launch pad because we put in a brand new 330 foot concrete launch pad, 1100 feet of NHRA spec asphalt. We just had our uh, small tire record broken a couple weeks ago at our 275 Madness race. Uh, Brian Carpenter from Minnesota. What are your records you were telling me about? Yeah, uh, Brian Carpenter from Minnesota went a 423 in the eighth mile on a 275 radial. Wow. And then our uh, big tire record in the eighth mile is a 389 at 190, and that was by Brandon Sandlin in the Junkyard Studebaker. That's cool, man. So, That's awesome. Fast this track. track. It's been around since 1963, actually, drag racing. Okay. So, cool. Yeah, we're excited to race here, man. Glad we made it. Yep. Happy you guys are here. Yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. Get some fast passes. All right, time to get the car unloaded. Yep. Let's do it. What's going on? All right, day four, Rocky Mountain Race Week. We're here in Kansas, and the track is set up completely different. You guys heard all the history about it, but they're only letting the cars that run faster than nine <laughs> seconds run to the eighth mile because the shutdown is so short. So tonight I'm only running the eighth mile and then they take my average from the big end over the past couple of nights to add to tonight's time. So it's set up a lot differently. I'm a little bummed because I was gonna really shoot for that 8.5 today. After I finally started to get the car figured out, especially on these big turbo cars, they really make up their time in the back half of the track. So I'm a little bit screwed because the past few nights I've been letting out right off the line. So I'm really relying on like a dead hook tonight. And hopefully doing like a 5.5 or 5.4 second eighth mile. Forty-one at 128. So yesterday I think I ran an eight or a 564 in the eighth. So we're a tenth off. We'll probably do one more pass just to see how we, how we can do. I stayed in it. I actually blipped the throttle a little bit. I know I did on the one-two shift. So I think there's more potential here. I think I think we can get more out of the car. So once this line dies down a little bit because this there's a huge huge line to make a pass then we'll see if there's time to do another one if not then we'll have to turn this slip in but i'm not mad about the time i talked to the guy who's in fourth he ran a five nine so if that's the best pass he can make for the night then we'll still be in third so we'll see all right all right spun off the line pretty hard on that first one so i'm going to turn down my uh, rev limiter on the trans brake from 3700 and try and do it at about 
Last pass was a 589. Uh, the one before it was a 574. So we're gonna turn in our 574 for the night. Not as great as not as great as last night, but hey, we're new to this eighth mile stuff, so it is what it is. We're gonna turn it in, see how we end up in the rankings. I talked to the guy who's in fourth. His car is doing really well. I don't know what he ran tonight because you only see our quarter mile times, and we're running an eighth. So we'll see. Taylor's Automotive. Green Wait, 190 miles. 190 miles, but dude, average tonight, what was it? A five, uh, or 872. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> All I got to say is our average time is faster than Leroy's for the week. Oh! oh. Dang. You went that far? I went that far. All right, let's see those road, road tomorrow. Um, Checkpoint one, we're going to Blackwell, Oklahoma. Thank you so much. 190 miles. Have a fantastic night. Let's do this, boy. One more night. This is how you know a man's got a gambling problem. He gets scratchers and all he does is scratch the barcode off. Doesn't even get to enjoy it. There's no enjoyment in it. All right, scan those, scan those things up. Let's see if you want anything. I want this check from my boy Nate. Come on. What are you calling? At least five bucks? Dude, Get your two, money back? I want 200 bucks. Oh, time. you're going down. You got 220s? Is going to pop up on the screen? Get out of here. You want 20 bucks? What's he got? I did nothing on that. Nah. So you're down 20? I'll take it back. Run it? Let me get a, You're going to run it? Play at the house? Let me get a one. 20 of them. 